Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 101. Day Day 3101, 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the 3rd edition, 3rd edition, day 101, and today we'll begin the topic of probability. We'll spend probably a few minutes, 4-5 or five minutes on discussing the very basic concepts of probability, and then we'll move on to the concept of mutual exclusivity. What does it mean for two events to be mutually exclusive? So let's first discuss, as we said, some basic, some fundamental concept of probability before we worry about what mutual exclusivity is. So let's begin, shall we? In probability, as you, as you know already, a random event is a probability experiment, what is known as probability experiment, for it, such as if you roll a dice, whatever outcome that we get, that act, that act of rolling a dice is called the probability experiment, which is also simply known as random experiment. For which, of course, for which, for which the result is uncertain, obviously. If we, if we pull a uh, card out of the, uh, pull a card out of, out of the deck of cards, we don't know which card we're going to pull. If we roll a dice, we do not know uh, which uh, dice, uh, what the outcome of the roll is going to be. If we pick one, if one student has picked a random out of 200, we do not know beforehand which student is going to be picked because we're picking one at random. But, 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 all the possible outcome, all the possible outcomes, outcomes, have to be have to be known beforehand of course all the possible outcomes has to have to be known beforehand we have to know we have to have the knowledge that if we roll the dice there are six possible outcome we have to know obviously we have to possess the knowledge that if you were to pick one card out of the deck of cards there are 52 possible outcomes and so on and so forth obviously for example, for example, if somebody asks us, what's the possibility, what's the probability of, uh, say, rolling, rolling a prime number? But before we can answer, before we can answer, what's the probability of rolling a prime number? If I were to roll a dice, if I were to roll a dice, what what are the odds that I will roll a prime number? Before I can, before we can answer that question. We have to know all the possible outcomes. We cannot leave any out, obviously. That's the only way. Because there's one chance out of how many possible total outcomes are there. In this case, rolling a prime number, when you roll a dice, well, we can roll a 2, we can roll a 3, or we can roll a 5. There are three possible outcomes, and we have to know that ahead of time. But all the possible outcomes have to be known before. And even though, even though we do not know what the outcome is going to be here, we know that there are three possible outcomes for, for out of total of these are what are known as favorable outcomes. These are favorable. Favorable outcomes. There are three favorable outcomes. In other words, there are three prime numbers out of the total possible outcomes. Total possible outcomes. These are very basic concepts. I know we are sort of being silly, but we have to keep that in mind. You understand? Otherwise, we cannot do the calculation. Otherwise, we cannot do the calculations. What we're going to do next here on page is what you're going to find. This, this is wrong. This is not page 320. I should have changed it. It's not page 320. We were on page 304. We were on page 304. We're going to move on now and we're going to discuss the concept that you see on page 305 again very quickly. Very quickly. We're going to do that only because the book is making a big fuss about it and they are sort of important even though they are very basic but they are important so it doesn't hurt actually to keep at the forefront of our uh, uh, knowledge for the lack of better way of finishing the sentence that is. So there are six general facts about probability that we must know. 
this is on top of page 305, 6, 6, general facts about probability. I think I'm going to change the marker because this marker is not, doesn't have much life left in it. Hold on. Number one. And you'll find this again, it's very important that you have the book in front of you, otherwise it does not work. Make sure you have the book in front of you, turn to page 305, on the very top of page 305 you will find the six general facts which is what we're doing right now. Fact number one. If we, if we claim that the odds of some event happening, event here, the event, the name of the event is E. We, that's the name of the event. If we claim that the odds of something happening is one, the probability of one simply means that it will happen for sure. It will happen for sure. Because you're telling me is one, is the probability is 100%, one is same as 100%. Probability of one means it will happen for sure. Similarly, if we claim that the odds of some event F, some other event F, if we say that it is zero, that means that it will never happen. It can't happen. It can happen. It can happen. If, if the event is possible, if let's say an event E, if event E is possible, it is possible, it's not, it's not something that is entirely impossible, it is possible, but not certain. We are not 100% sure that it will happen, but it can happen. When I roll a dice, it is possible that I might get a 4, but I'm not sure about it. Do you understand? Until I roll a dice, I do not know what I'm going to get, so it is possible to get a 4, but it's not certain. In which case, in that case, we know that the probability of this event, probability of event E, probability of event E has to be more than 0, because it is possible, it's not impossible. Had it been impossible, the probability would have been zero. It can happen, it's impossible. So it has to be more than zero because it is possible, but it's not certain. It's not certain, which means it's not 100%. So the probability in this case is between zero and one. Between zero and one. How do we indicate, how do we indicate the odds, the odds that an event, event E, will not occur. Well, if probability, if this represents the probability of event E, this represents, this represents the odds of E happening, then the odds that it will not happen is simply 1 minus that. It is simply 1 minus that. And this is how we represent it usually, E with this line on it, that line on the top, the bar on the top tells you that it's the odd that it will not happen. If P, P E is the probability that the event E will happen, then P with the E with the bar on the top means it, one minus that, that is, are the odds that it will not happen. For example, if the odds of happening something is 30%, then the odds that it will not happen is 70%, obviously 100 minus 30. Let's move on, the last two very quickly because we want to move on to what we, what we start out, which is mutual exclusivity. Number five. Sum of all possible occurs. PE, the probability of event that we're talking about, is simply the sum of, sum of the probability, probabilities of all favorable outcomes. That's important. Some of the probability of all the favorable outcomes. For example, we just talked about it. What's the probability that I roll roll a prime number? Or for that matter, what are the odds that we roll an even number when we roll a dice? Because they are all going to be, we're going to see they're going to be all equal. What are the odds that we roll a dial that we roll an odd number? I'm putting them equal to each other because they just happen to be equal to each other. So let's look at the first one. Well, what are the favorable outcomes? In the, in the case of prime number, the favorable outcomes are 2, 3, and 5. So it's 3 out of 6 because there are 6 possible outcomes. 
and it's 3 out of 5. Similarly, prime numbers there are 3 of them, it's 3 out of 6, it's 3 out of 6 for the odd numbers. So the sum of all the pro sum of probability of all the favorable outcome represents the probability of event E, because event E here being either we actually here we have three different events here. Uh, event E being either that we roll a prime number or even number or odd number. Or it could be any event, you understand? What are the odds? What are the odds that uh, what are the odds that we uh, pull a, pull an ace? If I were to pull a number out of the deck of cards at random, if I would, if you were to pick one card at random, what are the odds that we're going to get ace? Well, the odds is is the sum of probability of all favorable outcome, and there are four favorable outcomes because there are four aces, five out of fifty-two for the first ace and second ace, and so on and so forth because there are four of them. So instead of writing down one plus fifty-two plus one over fifty-two plus one over fifty-two plus one over fifty-two, if we can do that, or simply realize that there are four possible outcomes. There are four favorable outcomes, so therefore it's simply 4 out of 52. You understand? On the other hand, the sum of all, on the other hand, the sum of all outcomes, see, if we, if we cross out the word favorable, the sum of, sum of the probability of all outcome is simply 1, which is number 6. The sum of probability of all the outcome, not just favorable outcome, but all possible outcomes in an experiment, it's simply one, 100 percent. Of course, it has to add up to 100 yeah. percent. Let's move on. Enough of that thing. I don't know how much time we spend on it, but enough of this thing. Let's talk about the topic that we actually wanted to cover, which is mutual exclusivity. Mutual exclusivity. Two events, two events are said to be, two events are said to be mutually exclusive, two events are said to be mutually exclusive If occurrence of one, occurrence, occurrence only has one R, I believe, occurrence of one rules out together. For example, if you're talking about two possibilities, for example, let's roll a dice. Here's an example. Roll a dice. Now, before I write down my next word, the reason why sometimes people get confused between the concept of mutual exclusivity, listen very carefully. The reason why people get can't confuse, at least in the context of GRE, because GRE does not get too complicated when it comes to probability. It's a very basic concept that they're testing in the GRE. You don't have to worry about all the nitty gritty. Just a very basic, very fundamental concept that we have to understand. We talked about a few of them in the beginning just now, uh, basic concepts, and now we have to understand two more concepts for GRE, and that's all we have to understand. First concept being the mutual exclusivity, and the very last concept being the independence. What does it mean for two events to be independent? And what does it mean when we say the two events are mutually exclusive? As far as the GRE is concerned, as I said before, it's, it's, it's very simple, very basic. So in the context of GRE, what we have to understand is that when we talk about mutual exclusivity, here we're going to roll the dice just once. When we talk about two events being independent, there you will see, not today, but in the next video when we talk about the independence of the two events, we will see that we can only talk about the independence of the two events when we actually roll the dice twice. Do you understand? So here we are rolling dice only once, but we're talking about two events. Two events happening at the same time, at the same time only be, at the same time because we are rolling dice only once. We're going to roll the dice once where we're asking what are the odds that this and this will happen at the same time. For example, for example, we're going to roll the dice once, and the question is, and we know, we already know. The probability of even number, even number is half. 
We also know that probability of rolling a 3 is 1 sixth. <coughs> let's call this this let's call this event E probability of rolling an even number and let's call this event F probability of rolling a 3. What are the odds that we will roll a 3? The answer is 1 out of 6. What are the odds that we will roll an even number which is event E is 1 out of 2, 3 out of 6 actually, 1 half, 3 out of 6. Now in this case, in this case, here events E and F are mutually exclusive. Why are they mutually exclusive? Because if one happens, if one happens, the other cannot happen. So I have rolled the dice, listen carefully, I have rolled the dice and I just told you that I rolled an even number. Given the fact that I just told you that I rolled an even number, what are the odds that I also rolled a 3? Well, if I just told you that I rolled an even number, it rules out the possibility that I may have also rolled a 3 in, the, in that same roll at the same time, simultaneously at the same time. They cannot happen together. They cannot happen. If one happens, other cannot happen. Similarly, if I just told you that I rolled a dice and I just rolled a 3. I rolled the dice and the outcome was a 3. Well, given that fact that the outcome was 3, I just rolled a 3, I just told you, then what are the odds that I have also rolled an even number? But it rules out the possibility of rolling an even number if I just told you that I rolled a 3. So if event E happens, F cannot happen. If, if event E happens, F cannot happen. And vice versa. In that case, the two events are said to be mutually exclusive. They cannot happen at the same time. They cannot happen at the same time. They cannot both happen at the same time. Because we are talking about two events happening at the same time, which is here, which is why here we are rolling the dice only once. Two events does not mean that we are rolling the dice twice, which is where people sometimes get confused. They hear two events and they just automatically assume that the dice is being rolled twice. The dice is only being rolled once. The two events are defined as one event being rolling a three, second event being rolling an even number. And they cannot happen at the same time. It is impossible to have rolled an even number if we already rolled, a th if we already told that you rolled a three and vice versa. In which case the two events are said to be mutually exclusive. In the context of Venn diagram, in the context of Venn diagram there will be two disjointed sets, two disjointed sets. In other words they do not overlap because our event E was the first set, event F was the second test, event F was the possibility of rolling a 3, that's right here. Event E was possibility of rolling an even number. Well, there are three possible outcomes, 2, 4 and 6. As you can see, they have nothing in common. They do not overlap and therefore they are mutually exclusive. If two events are mutually exclusive in the, in the, in the context of Venn diagram, we will show them as two non-overlapping sets. They cannot overlap, they cannot touch because they have nothing in common. They have nothing in common is another way of saying that if one were to happen, other cannot possibly happen. If this happened, this cannot possibly happen. Do you understand? Let's move on. It's all related. They all tie in together. On day number, today is our day number 101. On day number 91, that is, 10 days ago, on day on day 3091 and I hope I hope that you've been watching these videos in the proper sequence because the things build on each other, do you understand? On day number 91 we talked about something called inclusive, inclusive, exclusive principle and if you haven't watched the video make sure you do watch it because I don't have a luxury of repeating everything. Inclusive, exclusive principle is simply employed to avoid to avoid, to avoid double counting. Inc 
inclusive exclusive principle it sounds very fancy but it simply means what it says it means it says that we must include all the possible outcome but we must exclude anything that is double counted anything that, that is double counted we must exclude it we cannot count them twice so if you you must include first all the possible outcomes and then take account for the fact that anything that is double counted for example an, an inclusive exclusive principle simply says this it says the probability of either either event E or F or both equals the probability of event E plus the probability of event F minus the probability that they will both happen, both E, both E and F occur. It would have looked better if we could actually fit all, the, all of this thing in one line. I should, have, I should have been careful, but anyway, that's what this is. For example, for example, let's define event E, let's define event E as rolling on rolling an even number. But if event E is defined as rolling an even number, we know what the possible outcomes are. Possible outcomes are 2, 4, and 6. And let's define event F as rolling a prime number. A prime number. And again, prime numbers are 2, 3, and 5. So, what are the odds that we will roll an even number? What are the odds that we will roll an even number? It's right here. It's, it's 3 out of 6. What are the odds that we will roll, roll? What are the odds that we will roll a prime number? Well, there are three possible outcomes, three possible favorable outcomes, three favorable outcomes, that is. There are three favorable outcomes out of six possible outcomes. Three favorable outcomes. It could be either 2, 3, or 5. They're all prime numbers. There are three favorable outcomes out of six. So if the question is asked, if the question is asked, what are the odds that you will roll on either E or F, even E or F for like second, or both, or both, And before we go any further, let's stop here for a second and I want to point something out to you. Listen very carefully again one more time. You see, if they both happen, if they both happen, then we already fulfilled these conditions. The first condition is either this or that. Well, if they both happen, then either this or that has, ha has already happened, obviously. It is this redundant. It is not necessary for us to say either this or this or both. So therefore, therefore, in most cases, in most textbooks, out of sheer laziness, that's the only reason, out of sheer laziness, people leave this out, they don't write it. They would simply say either E or F, but when they say, what are the odds that either E or F happens, included in that statement is implied that either this or that or both, even though it's not there. I, I, I didn't write it because I'm lazy. They do not write it down out of sheer laziness. So what are the odds that either this or that will happen, which is same as saying, what are the odds that event E or F will both happen? Well, in this case, we know that the odds of, odds of event E happening is 3 out of 6. We also know that odds of event F happening is also 3 out of 6. So does that mean that either this or that will happen with 100% certainty? If I roll a dice, is, if I roll a dice, is it guaranteed that I will roll on either a prime number or an even number? The answer is no. answer is no because we are double counting something. We have not taken account of this, which is why... Let me rewrite this entire equation so that I can fit this whole thing in one line so it looks better. I'm going to write it without it so that we have more room here. Let's, let's do it here. probability of E or F or both even though we didn't have to write this part is simply probability of E plus the probability of F minus the probability that that they will both happen
and this is what is known as inclusive exclusive principle and as long as as long as the two events are not mutually exclusive as long as the two events are not mutually exclusive in that case if we were to stop here this is wrong this is not this is wrong because the two events are here not mutually exclusive it is possible saying that the two events here are not mutually exclusive is another way of saying that it is possible, it is possible, it is not beyond the realm of possibility that the person may roll an even number and a prime number at the same time in one roll. Why? Because they have their in common. What are the odds that I will roll an even number? Well, there are three favorable outcome and of those three favorable outcome, one of them is this one, this guy, two. That's an even number. What are the odds that I will roll a prime number, but there are three possible outcomes, 2, 3, and 5. They are all prime numbers. As you can see, 2 appears in both sets. 2 appears in both sets. We cannot double count it, which is why we have 100% here. This is wrong. So we have the odds of rolling, a, uh, odds of rolling an even number here. Odds of rolling an even number here is 3 out of 6. Odds of rolling a prime number is 3 out of 6. But we have to take an account. We have to take... Take, in, take into account the fact that one of the events is double counted, which is the both part. Both part here being a number is both a prime number and an even number. And there is one such number. We have to, since we counted it twice, we counted it once in this set and we counted it another, a second time in this set, so therefore we have to take away one. And now it's the correct answer. So this is not correct. We have to minus the odds that the, that the both events will happen at the same time, which is one sixth. Because there is one possible outcome, or well, there is one outcome out of six possible outcomes where the two events might happen at the same time. It is quite possible that I'll end up rolling a two, in which case I have rolled just now an even number and a prime number. Therefore, now, now this is the correct answer. The answer is not six out of six, not six out of six, not 100 percent, but five out of six. Three plus three minus one. There we go. And if you wanted to show all of this thing in context of Venn diagram, it's very simple. In the context of Venn diagram, it will simply be, let's see, where can we squeeze it? In the context of Venn diagram, here is event E. Event E are the even numbers. And there are three possibilities, three, two, four, and six. And event F was the, was the event where we roll a prime number. And there are three possible outcomes there, two, three, and five. But as we can see, as we can see, by the mere fact, by the mere fact that we drew them as overlapping set, which means there must be something in common, they are not mutually exclusive. And what is common here is the two right here. So we have to take away from here, we have to take away from here and put it in the common area right here. And now we can clearly see that there are five chances. We have five chances out of six possible chances, six possible outcomes that will end up rolling either a prime number or an even number or both. Five ways we can do that. If I roll a dice, what are the odds? What are the odds that I'll either roll an even number or a prime number or both? The answer is there are five out of six chances because it is possible that I may roll four or a six or a two or a three or a five. One is not here because one is neither a prime number nor an even number. Which is why we had the wrong answer because, because we ended up saying 100% because we were double counting two. Do you understand? I know we made a lot of fuss about it, but it's a simple concept, but we must understand it. Otherwise, otherwise it causes problem later on as we start doing more complicated stuff because these are very fundamental concepts. The concepts of mutual exclusive exclu exclusivity and the concept of independence are the two most basic, most fundamental, most vital, most essential concepts in the study of probability. Do you understand? Tomorrow, tomorrow we'll talk about, because the video probably is already too long, I don't know how long it is, but tomorrow we'll discuss what it means for two events to be independent. When are they independent? What does it mean? How do we go about calculating the odds of these events happening? Okay? Bye now.